and welcome to my channel. My name is Martine, and if you are new here, I do videos on Vedic astrology mainly, but also with some tropical insights, and I focus on both relationship and natal astrology. And if you like this video and you would like to hear more content from me, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell to see when I will post a new video. And also, if you're interested in a personal consultation, I do consultations on a wide variety of topics. Please check out the video description. I will leave my contact information there. Thank you. And also, as an extra note, I do also do tarot readings. And if you're interested in finding out more about tarot readings, I can send you feedbacks and sample readings that I have done so far. Of course, anonymous for various people through a separate online platform. So, yes, if you would be interested in finding out more about getting a tarot reading from me, you can also email me at the email address that I will leave in the video description. Okay, thank you. So today's video is going to be again on a topic that I have considered talking about um, separately for quite some time now. The reason I say separately is because I have also briefly mentioned this particular topic in the video that I have done uh, titled Venus as the Wife. Uh, I think it's Venus as the Wife in uh, in a man's chart. I'm going to link that video in the video description if you are interested in finding out more about it. I went in depth there. It's a long video about how to interpret Venus in a man's chart, in a straight man's chart, with respect to what he can expect from a wife, let's say. Um, but this is on a very particular topic that I discussed there, which is Moon Venus aspects in the natal chart. So this is mainly about men, again, in a man's chart, in a man's natal chart, and straight man, I mean, but of course it also applies to women who are gay and identify more as masculine. You would also have to look at their Venus situation the same way as you would look at a man's. And um, so that this, this video would also apply to them. Um, I would say to a lesser degree it applies to women, but I'm going to get more into that as I go along. So what have I noticed with this aspect? Um, first of all, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. The first time I heard this idea was from another astrologer, Ernst Wilhelm, and he had a video that I saw ages ago. To be fair, he's a tropical astrologer, but he still has a lot of valuable insights, so I do like to watch his videos every now and then. And he had this video where he was talking about how Moon Venus, he said conjunction um, in a man's chart is bad for relationships in the sense that this man cannot really um, well, he put it in a way that is really fatalistic and did not really offer much in, in the way of advice uh, on how to deal with this. Um, but basically what he said is that when a man has the conjunction between Moon and Venus in his chart, he is basically incapable of having a relationship because he either makes the relationship, the romantic relationship, all about him or all about the partner. In either situation, basically, it's not a balanced situation. And ideally, and he really explained it very beautifully like this, because he said a relationship is supposed to be a merger of energies, and it's supposed to be something that is a combination of two people's separate energies. So it's something higher than both people. It's not about one person or the other. And in fact, the way that he put it was like literally that if it's one person or the other, it's not really a relationship, right? Which makes sense, right? Um, because it's like, yeah, so he really explained it beautifully that, you know, if, if it's a relationship where it's one or the other partner gets all their needs met and the other partner is ignored or feels like they can't be themselves, that's not really a relationship, right? Because a relationship is supposed to be um, about both people getting their needs met, both people um, being happy and fulfilled, getting companionship and everything that they need out of the relationship, right? So if it's like one person just following the other or, you know, one person constantly obeying the other or what the other person says, um, that's not real that's not a real relationship okay so in in any case it's at the very least an imbalanced situation where 
at least one of the partners is going to be desperately miserable. So, and usually what I have seen, um, I have looked at this for a long time. Like I, I watched this video a long time ago. I don't know, some years ago, I think. And I have really noticed that, you know, at first I found it um, a little bit weird, but then I realized that I actually know quite a few people, a few men that actually match this description who have the moon Venus um, conjunction and they are so self-centered that oftentimes they struggle with holding down relationships or even when they are married or when they are in a long-term relationship, um, they end up with women who uh, just tolerate them for what they are, but they don't really have like a genuine connection with the women in, in question. And I know this sounds kind of like judgmental of me. I'm not a therapist and I haven't done couples therapy or something, but I rely heavily on my intuition. And generally it takes me very little um, time to notice two people interacting to realize what is really happening there, um, like on a deeper level. But let me get into detail. So the first thing that I do want to say about this um, is that he, Ernst, only talked about the conjunction. Um, what I have noticed looking at empirical, you know, study, I mean, basically through empirical observation that I have done at of various charts over the years is that Actually, it applies to pretty much any contact, I would say, between Moon and Venus. And here I'm going to get a little bit into tropical astrology more because it's not just about the conjunction. So it is particularly strong when the man has the Moon-Venus conjunction or the Moon-Venus opposition because these are the two, according to Vedic astrology as well, these are the only um, two but possible aspects that can happen between Moon and Venus. If you don't look at Jaimini, I'm going to make this as a parenthesis. I do not look at Jaimini aspects. Um, to give, just to give you the short of it, Jaimini aspects are basically um, saying that, you know, um, certain signs, they're looking at signs, okay? So like certain signs will always aspect other signs okay and there's like a list for how you can see these aspects which signs you know planets in aries will always aspect the same signs for instance um but i personally have not really seen the jaimini aspects to be particularly useful again i'm not saying i'm not going to change my mind at some point but for now i'm not looking at these aspects okay um i don't i have not seen them to be true but I will mention it as a parenthesis. If you are interested in, in finding out more about them, you can certainly Google and figure out if you know someone who maybe has Jaimini aspects uh, between the moon and Venus and see if this description matches their personality. That would be interested. Okay, interesting. But yeah, aside from this, um, when, yeah, in Vedic astrology, only the conjunction and the opposition are possible between um, Moon and Venus, because the Moon and Venus only can conjoin or oppose a different planet. However, what I have noticed is that even men who have the square, the trine, even, I haven't actually seen people with the sextile, but I'm pretty sure that even with the sextile, there's a little bit of this happening, this dynamic. But with the, with the square and the trine, I have seen it to a lesser degree than the conjunction and the opposition. The conjunction and the opposition are probably the worst, especially the conjunction and especially if the conjunction is within 10 degrees. Because remember that in Vedic astrology, uh, as long as two planets are in the same sign, it counts as a conjunction. However, when it is below 10 degrees difference, like for instance, moon is in zero degrees Aries and Venus is within six degrees is in six degrees Aries that's below 10 degrees um then it will be particularly strong it's even more strong the tighter the orb is like if it's under three degrees of orb then it's going to become really embedded in this person's psyche and what I have noticed uh okay because I only described basically conjecture uh so far um what really happens with these men that, and, and you can look for yourself, like, I'm going to mention some famous examples. Um, they are so self-absorbed because the moon is 
the mind and venus in a man's chart or in a gay woman's chart is the wife archetype it's what he expects from the wife and what i see what often happens especially with men especially with men who have the conjunction is that these men will tend to expect the woman to basically comply to them okay so they they almost don't even treat the woman like a separate person they see a woman as kind of like an aftermath and and this is not necessarily out of chauvinism of course if it if this is like if this aspect shows up in the chart of a man who is also raised in a macho culture quote unquote it's probably that much worse but it's not necessarily out of chauvinism it's just that these men are so self-absorbed that they almost don't even notice that a woman has her own needs right in a relationship and what usually happens with this aspect of course eventually is that the woman ends up feeling alone in the relationship because this guy is just all oh, so self-absorbed he's so focused on himself he is in his head all the time because moon venus context also makes a person really refined intellectually so generally they can be very they will enjoy to think for the sake of thinking um, they also will enjoy to read and stuff like this but it makes a person like i said very self-absorbed to the point where they don't even notice and this is the kind of the tragedy of this aspect the tragedy is that and, and again if you look at famous examples some famous examples of men who have i think the conjunction they definitely have a moon venus contact but i'm not 100 percent sure it was the conjunction or the opposition um kevin costner tom cruise zane malik they all have this uh, i think zane malik also has venus in the first house which makes him extra narcissistic this is really and again i'm not labeling people here but this is one potential outcome is that these men can actually come across as possessing high narcissistic traits because they are so focused on themselves you know all the time especially if these planets are also um in the first house oh my god and what happens here the tragedy like i mentioned is that these men don't even realize what they're doing wrong in relationships you oftentimes see them jumping around from one relationship to another and they are not capable of maintaining because they don't realize that they're so callous towards their partners that they don't even you know fully pay attention to her needs um or what she wants out of the relationship or what she wants out of life she he refuses to accept the fact that this is a separate individual that does not have to cater to his every need really because think about it this way also interestingly now that i'm thinking about it moon also represents your not just your mind and your basic personality but your needs your emotional needs so it's it's a very uh, you know intense energy the moon energy it's really just attracting and it's it's about getting what you need in life and when the moon is conjunct with the wife archetype the man is going to expect the woman to meet all all his needs unconditionally like constantly you know and unconsciously especially if this aspect is very tight the tighter the orb is um especially with the conjunction but even the rest of the aspect the more self-absorbed he's going to be and the more unconscious he's going to be with respect to his own behavior like he will not be able to see that his ways are wrong the error of his ways so to speak okay and yeah this is one thing and what another sad consequence that i have noticed is that usually with these men especially especially not especially even when they end up in relationships often it is women who are self-interested materialistic sometimes why because especially this is actually an aspect and i maybe should have mentioned this in the video that i did on narcissism it is an aspect especially the conjunction again especially if moon and venus are connected to the first house can make a man really narcissistic really self-absorbed so they attract these kinds of women who um are very materialistic and they learn how to manipulate them so you know the women who are with them in long-term relationships they're usually the kind of women who analyze their behavior realize that this person is self-absorbed and they start to try to adjust their behavior according to what the man expects 
<laughs> and it's like you know because yeah as usual as as usually happens with narcissists especially men who are narcissists this is something that even in psychology will you will uh hear psychologists talk about the fact that narcissists often end up in relationships with gold diggers or women who are very materialistically interested um because let's be real narcissists are not really capable of having a real connection with another human being because a sane woman, a woman who actually has decent self-esteem, maybe she's able to take care of herself financially, and she wants a real relationship and a real emotional connection, she's not going to put up with it. You know, she will be in the relationship because, and again, these very aspects, especially the conjunction and the opposition, to some extent also the trine and the sextile, actually all of them, let's be real, but especially the conjunction, is going to make also ironically going to make a man really attractive you know um especially to women because he's going to come across as someone who has a really strong feminine side often i mean as i've mentioned these famous examples kevin costner tom cruise zane malik right they're they can they can be very charming very attractive and especially since the moon rules the face and venus is beauty can these men oftentimes have nice features they're pretty and they're also very charming because Venus is about diplomacy, it's about arts, they can be very creative, very artistic, and so they attract people and women, potential partners, very easily because, you know, they're very charming on the surface, but what happens is, of course, once a woman starts to get to know them and realize how self-absorbed they are, they, the, the healthy ones are going to bail out and what I have, you know, this is more often than not what happens. Another potential um, development for this aspect is that the man flips, and this is usually, especially with men who are more, um, let's say they're more inclined to self-analysis, and they really try to understand themselves, and usually these kinds of men, maybe after a couple of failed relationships, will start to think I'm doing something wrong. And what they'll do is they'll flip to the opposite direction and start to put the woman on a pedestal. So they think, oh, well, I'm, you know, I tried to have a relationship. It didn't work out. But maybe if I make sure that, you know, I treat my partner like a complete princess and I cater to her every whim, and I do everything she wants, and I make sure that she's happy all the time, then the relationship will last. But that's making it every bit as worse as making it all about himself, because once again, the relationship is not supposed to be about one or the other partner, not 100%. It's supposed to be about both people and what both people can do together. It's about focusing on a higher uh, um, basically, the relationship is like a third party, like, <laughs> you know, it's like the Holy Ghost that, you know, comes out of two partners united in, you know, through our powers combined, here comes Pe Captain Planet, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> like, seriously, though. Um, yeah, so basically, but these men, because because Venus is aspecting their moon, which is their mind, another thing that I think is happening is that because Venus is so receptive, both of these energies are so feminine. These men can be very focused on just getting things, you know? They want to receive. They want to receive, but they're not so good at giving, especially in a relationship. Unless, of course, there could be variations to this if there are other planets aspecting the moon. And, of course, depends, of course, also what, what sign this is happening in, what signs, and, of course, the whole chart has to be looked at but in general there is always going to be some level of this playing out when you see these aspects between the moon and venus and the reason i think this is happening is because and it's particularly um happening to men because i think society really turns a blind eye to men being self-absorbed i mean i think you know even in a woman's chart the moon venus aspect can make a woman very this pretty much the same way it can be very selfish can be very self-absorbed and the women who are uh who have this conjunction especially the conjunction um i've seen it i have seen it with a few they can be every bit as self-absorbed as the man but they will learn how to mask it because society you know if you're a woman and you from an early age you're all about yourself and you're like um 
you're constantly talking about yourself and you're constantly in your head and obsessed with your thought processes and your creativity and all this stuff, eventually people are going to slap you over the wrist and tell you, like, stop talking about yourself or, like, you're so self-absorbed, right? Because society is much less tolerant towards women becoming um, very caught up in themselves. Whereas for a man, especially if the man reaches a certain level of, let's say, social success, like, you know, like I mentioned these famous examples, you know, people are like, so what? I mean, or, or they will act like, uh, you know, any woman should be grateful to be with a man who is successful. So what if he's self-absorbed? Like, you know, <laughs> like he should be grateful that he gives her the she should be grateful that he gives her the time of day right if he is socially successful or it's seen as you know like men are supposed to be uh, self-absorbed it's boys will be boys quote unquote but the reality is and the reality is that this aspect it can be equally detrimental actually it's particularly detrimental i'm sorry for men because again for men venus is the wife archetype for a woman actually um venus is the partner archetype in general but for a woman it's not the main partner archetype for a woman the main spouse archetype is jupiter and the boyfriend quote unquote archetype is mars okay so it depends on what else is happening in her chart so it's not going to affect the relationship as much when it is the woman who has the conjunction versus when the man when the man has this conjunction again especially the conjunction but to some extent even with the square the trine the sextile i've seen variations of this happening okay the tighter the orb the more intense the aspect is going to be felt in this person's um, psyche okay and um, yeah this is pretty much what i wanted to say i'm pretty sure that i hope i haven't forgotten anything no, but pretty much this is what I wanted to say. And I have noticed it a lot right now. Uh, and I've noticed it actually with the reason I wanted to even make this video is I noticed this with a guy that an online friend that I used to talk to for a long time. And this is a guy who was always complaining about he can't get a girlfriend. And he has this moon Venus contact. And um, he was in a relationship. He was in several relationships. They didn't end up well. Okay. It was basically each time the girlfriend left. And he was always, and after talking to him, I could see some errors in the way that he was thinking and whatever that could be potentially off putting. Uh, but I couldn't really 100% put my finger on exactly why this, I mean, a person who was struggling so, trying so hard to be decent, he seemed really decent and whatever. But he seemed to not be able to hold down a relationship. And what I, this aspect could definitely explain a, a huge degree to it, okay? Um, the fact that he comes across as very self-absorbed. And really, I don't even know exactly what to say in terms of how to deal with this aspect. I think the, the way to deal with it is to just become more self-aware. And to re recognize the fact that, hey, this other person wants to has needs and and has to have their needs met and has to have um not just their needs met but their their life purpose has to be fulfilled and you have to allow for that and you have to um focus on what you can do together and creating something bigger than both of you okay in terms of like you know something greater that you can both work towards okay so it's not about one person or the other um, and again, with this guy in question that I used to talk to, I could tell to some extent that he was flipping between these two modes of like, uh, because the stuff that he was saying about some previous relationships were like, either that he was putting the woman on a pedestal and, you know, being too much about her to the point where he was sacrificing himself in the process, or it was the other uh, end of the spectrum where he was, especially early on in his life, he was too self-absorbed. And the women eventually broke up with him. Yeah, because if a person is too self-absorbed, the other person is going to feel alone in the relationship, right? It makes sense. So yeah, this has been it. And I wanted to talk about it because, again, it's one of those, like, I hope this is going to help you understand maybe potential relationship dynamics a lot better. Um, yeah, and uh, if you have liked it, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell to see when I will post a new video. And once again, if you're interested in a personal consultation, astrology, or tarot, please email me at the 
email address that I will leave in the video description. Thank you. Thank you.